We're live. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Another fucking Wednesday morning, and I'm stressed to the gills. But we're here, and everyone's healthy. So let's get our posture up, take a nice breath. Grab yourself a refreshment, take a little slurp, and let's get serious. Let's give a quick thanks to our sponsors here before we get started. Uh, Blue Chew. Guys, it's all about the confidence when it's time for sex, am I right? And what's better confidence booster than fun around with your partner? All courtesy of Chewables from BlueChew.com. What's BlueChew.com? Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in a chewable form at a fraction of the cost. Blue Chew's tablets help men combat all forms of ED and provide harder and lasting, longer lasting erections. If you're dealing with ED, I mean, there's got to be something like health. I mean, something with your fucking health that's wrong. Yeah. Maybe it's you get nervous. I mean, I, I know mm, one time uh, right. JX had a situation where he couldn't get that bone bone hard where a blue chew would have came in handy. Because Blue Chew is an online prescription service, there are no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy, and it ships right to your door in a discreet package. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within the days. The best part, it's all done online. Blue Chew's licensed medical providers work with you to find the right ingredient and the strength for your prescription. And here's a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code REDHAWK at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's BlueChew.com, promo code REDHAWK, all one word, to receive your first month free. And like I said, this is probably not a good thing to get hooked on. But once in a while, all when right, you need right. to perform, and maybe uh, maybe it's a girl you've been working on for a while, and right, you yeah, really want to yeah. make her just fucking... Really you can't you self. can't you can't stutter yeah you can't you, you can't, can't fucking stumble. roll in there with a half right, stock right. expecting to make her want to come back mm -hmm. so. and especially let's say you drink like a fish let's say you're like a whiskey guy and you know mm -hmm. you can't you don't want to be there at the end of the night like yes. uh, fold you your know. wiener in yeah right right uh also <laughs> we got uh jx started his new youtube so you can give that a give that a look jx do, does a lot of creative shit in his life and he's gonna put out some good videos and you know with jx it's always gonna be quality so go give his uh his youtube page a gander so we're what, here what's what's he doing he's doing what do you got doing just like um lifestyle stuff so I'll, I'll showcase like the screen printing stuff okay like behind the scenes of the brand and then also like jujitsu so a lot of jujitsu shit so like rolls mainly what i posted last time yeah it'll cool. be good uh, yeah. i'll give you a here i'll give you a, a little uh introduction here in a second but nice. fucking go to the, my new gym last night which is pretty much kitty corner from my gym here and i'm like oh simple i'll just grab six guys and we'll move the ring over i just got to move it over about five feet so i can fit more zebra mats for more mat space and we're pushing it one two three push blah, and we're all just fucking getting that thing going and then boom it hits a sprinkler head oh like, i saw that yeah and it just starts shooting out nine, <laughs> 90 gallons per minute and we were in the, i mean that thing was shooting 90 gallons per minute for at least 20 minutes oh so 1800 gallons of water just fucking drenching the joint Damn. and literally when that thing hit i did i didn't even i'm like i have no idea what to do like legit right. no idea what to do thankfully we had uh one of my students moms melissa she's kind of like our gym mom helps us do all the all the shit that i don't know how to do mm -hmm. but she went out back my buddy brad too helped turn off the water and uh and right. we flooded the joint right. so that's beautiful i do have a buddy who uh is in water damage repair just letting you know oh thanks i mean i should be i should be good we got the uh, some people that there they, they sucked out all the water they're drying the carpets now it started leaking into my neighbor's property i mean could be way worse but i'm like 
fuck. Thankfully, I'm, I'm just started reading this bu- this book about business, and just like when you have business, especially when you start to have multiple businesses, mm-hmm. just know a hundred percent that there's stress and problems going to come about. You right, just gotta fucking right. stay calm and <clears throat> deal with it. But I think jujitsu and being in fighting for so long, in hectic moments, it helps you kind of just stay calm and be like, okay, if it helped to panic and stress. Oh, I'd be mm-hmm. panicking and stressing, but it doesn't right, fucking right. help. So you might as well just yeah, think about what yeah. the best moves are and get her done. Yeah. So, but we're here with my, uh, my buddy, longtime friend here, Clayton Carpenter, 26 years old. He has six wins professionally and zero losses. Um, 125 pound division. I was telling Sean last night, I was actually telling him on our last podcast, I could very well see you becoming the champion at 125. Yeah, that's the plan, man. Uh, I've been doing it for a little while, and uh, I'm excited. Yeah, I mean, really it's excited. it's sweet you finally got in the big show because you got the knockout in LFA, and then they mm-hmm. offered you, they, they kind of gave you an opportunity to either fight for the LFA title or... No, they didn't. I was what was it i they kept kind of weaning me off no shade to the lfa guys i i like them uh a uh, big fan they're super cool the people that run it uh, nothing but good things to say about them yeah but um i felt like i was on i was in the caliber for the the title shot and they they never they never gave it to me. I don't know if it was a combination of the guy who had the belt, you know, didn't really want that fight early on in his professional career. Like maybe the one that had the belt, was he a Brazilian kid? Uh, no, it was before the Brazilian kid. I oh, think. okay. It was uh, somebody else. But, um, but yeah, uh, and it was whatever. But uh, you got a fight on you. You fought on the contender series and got a, a finish. Careful for, mm-hmm. f- for some herbal remedies. Uh, not right now. I'm good. Okay, no problem there. But uh, so now we're in the UFC. Oh, the mm-hmm. thing about so you started jujitsu when you were how old? I started training jujitsu when I was 11 years old. 11 years old, yeah. and you did you start wrestling before that? Or was that your first kind of introduction to the combat sports? So my introduction into the combat sports was when I was five, about to turn six. I wanted to get into the arts. I was a fan of boxing pretty uh-huh. soon, and my father didn't want to put me in boxing right away, so he put me in karate. I went to Shotokan Karate judo and i started doing wrestling camps when i was like six seven years old nice so like i always wonder too like because you've been sticking i mean you've been at it for now for a while then so you've Mm -hmm. been around martial arts for almost 20 years and you're only 26 years old i always wonder because like there's so many dads and fathers that want their son to wrestle or do jujitsu and then they're so hard on them and then they get really good but then by the time they're 18 and they're able to make their own decisions they're like fuck that i'm not doing that anymore i had to do that my whole life so how did your dad and your your family and stuff make it fun and make you want to stick with it and you know that's that's a really big question it's a and it's there's no singular answer for that you know everyone's different but yeah but i'm asking you how did he make it how did he make it fun for you how did it was it was my decision it was i think i think that's like the big thing is it was my decision and he just um, facilitated an environment for me to grow mm-hmm. instead of the daunting um, just force. Just like you have you to know? do it. Yeah, yeah. And there becomes a point where the path becomes really hard and really difficult because we do, like, this is a very, this is a hard path to mm-hmm. walk, you know. And that's like the, that's the question is like how do you how do you make them walk a hard path like there's days where i didn't want to go to the gym you know Mm -hmm. as a kid like even though it is my decision and even though it is what i wanted you know when i'm a little kid like oh my god i don't want to go today you know then he didn't really uh he didn't really no you're going you little bitch or yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. he's just like ah no he's just like you're going (laughs) okay Mm -hmm. so he'd force you to go that'd be that's good there Mm -hmm. yeah the thing about you and uh 
I mean, you and Kyler, because you and Kyler are kind of similar in the ways you guys started really early. Mm -hmm. You guys are both very, like, athletic, very skilled and knowledgeable on the ground. I mean, and you're both good wrestlers, and you're both super disciplined. I mean, like, that's right there is the recipe to be a champion. I mean, there's a lot of luck goes involved in a fight career. Mm -hmm. But I'm looking forward to watching you guys. Uh, yeah, it was pretty climb. funny. I got a... Uh so me and Kyler, we grew up doing jujitsu, like seeing each other at jujitsu tournaments. And he was, uh, he was a little older than me, and he was always uh, like slightly bigger as kids, and and we would always see each other. And so our dads, I don't know how our dads found these like underground fight scene <laughs> like uh -huh. deals, like of finding for like fighting on the Indian res. And Craig's like there's this maybe it probably yeah <laughs> something <laughs> let come but, let your uh, kids fight some yeah yeah but um but we actually our first interaction together was in the warm up room where we were fighting on some Indian res mm -hmm. th at this casino and and he didn't have any gloves to fight with he like forgot his gloves or something and we're in the warm up room getting ready and. And he used a, an extra pair of my gloves. And it wasn't until a couple years ago, I think, or yeah, a couple years ago, he still had the gloves. Mm -hmm. Like his dad still had the gloves. So it's like, we had this like huge journey, like so separate, mm -hmm. you know? And then I thought it was, it was, um, it was pretty beautiful how we ended up kind of on the same team on yeah on the same team and then i go and visit his family and his his father like hands me the gloves that i <laughs> gave to him when i was like you know 13 yeah. years old that is cool because yeah because there was a point where it's like oh yeah kyler's like one of the best young guys in jiu-jitsu clayton's one of the best guys in jiu-jitsu we want to see the guys go together but now ended up end up training together and uh helping each other grow because i was watching you guys on uh friday i think it was here at the gym go and i'm like god these motherfuckers are solid dude you can just mm -hmm. tell you guys have 10 plus years of solid jiu-jitsu under you guys's belt so um you got your debut coming up who you got it against uh it's this guy named juan juan camillo huh yeah yeah damn mm -hmm. so four and one he hasn't he had one fight in the ufc mm -hmm. um i think they threw him against a killer too yeah well yeah. it looked like he was a champion in what organization here oh wxc uh. wxc okay so now he's got to fight you which sucks mm -hmm. he's five three one twenty five so he'll probably take a schlacken when is that fight uh february 18th february 18th or, damn so you got yeah, plenty 18th. of time so how how important i mean first of all i always tell people too because you're lucky your parents lived in phoenix phoenix mm -hmm. is a mecca for mma mecca for jiu-jitsu yeah. a mecca for everything so did you live with your parents for a while and they kind of supported you through training oh it was um it, it was more than that it was just like it was the lifestyle but and they but but like you didn't have to go out and get a job to pay for rent right away when when i was i moved out when i was uh 20 21 mm -hmm. and i was living with my homie just doing uber and uh making it work teaching privates mm -hmm. and then i did that for a few years where i worked at the smoke shop like right by uh right by the lab mm -hmm. on on 29th and indian school and it was it was pretty funny you know some little white boy in there like working yeah. at the smoke shop but like the importance of i mean I, I always tell amateurs out there if you have the chance to live with your parents while you're training you definitely should absolutely it's almost like th this uh this journey is is so so difficult you know and mm. it's it's so it's it's pretty uh it's just a it's just a hard one you know and like you said like the easier the the easier things can be you know financially the better yeah 100 you know? percent. because i mean dude if your goal is to be a, a professional fighter it's like you i've said it many times before you got to plan on being broke you got to just yeah. have a passion for martial arts mm -hmm. and you got to feel rich just because you can train martial arts every day right yeah your um your value of currency needs to be fucking low yeah oh yeah or or no no no. like like your value of currency needs to be different you yes. know like this is the currency 
You yes, know, like I get to do what I love. I get to train. Yeah, right, that makes sense. Right. And for you, especially, like how important is it? Because you see, just so many guys. I mean, they end up getting to the UFC, and then between fight camps, they just let themselves go. They don't say disciplined. Mm -hmm. I mean, people out of the UFC too, but a lot of it happens when the UFC because people get to the UFC and they think they kind of made it. But that's really mm -hmm. when the hard work starts. Now you got to fight right. a fucking animal every single fight. So is it important for you to stay? pretty disciplined between fight camps uh i think especially like getting into the ufc it it really set the mindset of living the life and i think that's like a bigger picture of what you're saying of how like people really go from the two extremes after they win a fight and i think that that's kind of due to the fact that the life that you need to live leading up to fight camp is so is so strict you know that when when that when when there's nothing in front of you when there's no opponent when there's nothing when you don't have a date then it's like oh then you kind of like let it go to the full extreme on the other side oh for sure but yeah. it's like dude in fight camps it's mostly like okay now i'm getting in shape i'm getting in right. shape for a 15 minute battle i'm getting my heart ready i'm getting my body ready to go right. outside of fight fight camp that's where you can just try to work on some new shit possibly yeah I, but you know i kind of adopted the mindset of the continual evolution mm -hmm. and like my uh the spectrum of, of where I like to stay. I, I don't like to go too far on both sides of the spectrum. Yeah, of course. You know, I like to stay in that little, that yeah. little window. You where know? you'll just fucking burn out. Where, and, and I think it's, um, it's also good because once you, if you dive too far down, like getting too fat, you know, then it's like, like that's good. Like you need to feel that. I think that it's important for you to like, to do it but after a while like i can't really spend more than like a week of it without just feeling disgusted with myself oh my. well it know? just affects your thinking it yeah. affects your sleeping and then it just affects everything bro mm -hmm. and it's like i always wonder too it's like how good do you really want to be someone like even like patty and I, i'm sure mm -hmm. he'll end up changing his habits as he grows and matures right, and right. stuff but seeing him blow up to 200 205 pounds after the mm -hmm. fight i'm like fuck bro that's gonna shorten up your career a lot mm -hmm. and i don't really have uh enough info to understand how it would shorten his career but i think that that is a common trope because that because we're extremists i, I have this like theory that because we do what we do it kind of categorizes us in this extremist cat like category mm -hmm. and because we're able to go to the extreme we will sometimes people will dive too far on the other side 100 oh, percent. i mean and, and if you have a if you cut have cut a lot of weight in the past and mm -hmm. you're on this strict disciplined diet for six to eight weeks and then the, that week after comes and now you have the opportunity to eat whatever you want for a little bit but you know mm -hmm. you're going to sign a contract again so you're gonna have to be disciplined again so it's like this it's almost this eating disorder disorder you get in your brain and i fucking used to have it bad too mm -hmm. you just want to stuff and every single meal you want to stuff until you can't breathe just mm -hmm. because you can mm -hmm. and you know i think that's a that's a huge huge topic and a huge subject of what is like really the horrible thing with wrestlers and like with wrestlers and certain other people that fall into these really messed up eating disorders and i think that a very like a key um not a key detail it's like a major it's like a major detail it's like a key component a key component to not falling into a eating disorder is creating healthy eating habits during the fight camp yeah like, like well <clears throat> i mean you eat like shit you're like your blood sugar spikes and uh -huh. then it drops and then you want to eat like shit again then it spikes and your con in this constant fucking blood sugar spike right, goes down. Right. blood sugar spike you start eating healthy for a handful of days and it starts leveling out and you kind of stop craving it mm -hmm. after a little bit yeah you got to get out of that funk you know and but one thing that i feel like i kind of conquered this mindset of feeling like because <clears throat> you need to i feel like you need to just conquer your mind to not fall into these eating disorder habits of like going too far on the other side. Yeah. And one thing that I've found 
to help me just like because I've been living this life for so long I found you got to find I like to call it non-guilty pleasures yeah not, not guilty pleasures like desserts like jacking off or not not necessarily but uh no i'm thinking mainly like desserts okay. i'm thinking mainly uh like uh like you feel the reason why people fall into these eating disorders is because they feel like they're not eating what they want to eat you know, it's just like, I want to eat the junk. I, you know, like I'm, I'm stuck in this really healthy food, but like, I'm looking at the chips and I'm looking at the ice cream, you know, yeah. and it's good on our taste buds. Right. Right. Yeah. But, and that's what I'm saying. Like, you got to kind of like the non guilty pleasures is like, I'll, you need to reward yourself. Like, I feel like when you find, like, I'll do like coconut milk ice cream. Like mm -hmm. they have really good coconut milk ice cream at Sprouts mm -hmm. and I make, uh, I make a healthy uh, banana nut bread that's mm. really good. And I cut out the flour and I I make like a combination of like cornmeal, coconut flour, and cassava flour. A so A little bit <clears throat> of fucking yum yum there. But, yeah. But trying yeah. to keep it clean, which is good. Is it a, fo I was talking to Mariah about this. I'm like, is it a foreign concept to most people eating healthy and working out? Uh, I don't think it, it's not a foreign concept. It's like, I think it's, it's the most basic bare bones thing ever. You know, I think it's so many people, so many companies make money off of it, trying to sell the new thing. You know, I think people are always looking for like the new secret keto this oh no now there's this one now there's you know this diet. but i'm saying like even outside of our game you see uh -huh. a majority 80 percent of people you see in america are just mm -hmm. like fat and saggy and we look at them yeah. like normal like oh that's a normal person it's like it's right. not a normal person that's a fat and sick person right and right. like even like how rationally can you even think being a, just a fat person who's just on these blood sugar spikes constantly constantly and can you be like can you be a top tier person without being, I mean, I mean eating healthy, uh, you have to have discipline, right? But to right. be a top tier person, can you be a top tier person without discipline? I don't think in, so. In, I don't think so at all. I don't think so at all. And I think that your body is a direct reflection of your actions and like clearly you know like this is like a topic that's a very like tricky that a lot of people like to get emotionally charged about you know and why like, do you think like a, a heavy person yeah like yeah like being they, a little because then it's just like oh what's wrong with you you know people like to get in those little those things like almost like we're we're attacking these the, the fat people but maybe if you feel offended by it there's a reason you feel there's a reason by it. and see that's the thing i i have no rock i i if you want to live your fat happy life cool it's not Li it's not that it. though there's it, no way that you can portray it you can be a fat like you, you're gonna affect your sleep right you know how how much exercise no, it's makes clearly happy. it's clearly horrible and yeah. it's and it's gonna completely it's gonna clog your whole nasal system like you said like it's gonna affect your breathing like my my father was overweight for a little while and he had horrible sleep horrible sleep to the point where he was wait, like was he hitting ambien ever he was i don't think so um he was uh but he was waking up i think he was waking up they did the the sleep test on him mm -hmm. you know and he was waking up like 50 times in the night like holy shit and he wasn't getting real sleep and when you don't get real sleep like that, if it affects everything, it affects your mood, it affects your thyroid, it affects your whole body. Yeah. And I think it's, it's very evil how we've kind of come to this point where we almost like glorify the gluttony of, of certain individuals, you know? Yeah. Like, do you have any examples? Um, I'll give a I'll give a hot take like Lizzo, you know, like people talk about Lizzo and like people like that's kind of uh, like a topic of discussion where she's just like, oh, well, nothing's wrong with it. You know, and is Lizzo a heavy set woman? I believe so. Yeah. I'm not even sure. Who Lizzo is. A lot of like uh, fashion like uh, houses or even just like H&M or anything in that world. They're they're trying to embrace like be big. Yeah, well, I, I get it. But, and but they're I trying to say like dude it's still not okay you know what i mean yeah and, and like i said just a disclaimer i want you to live your happy life whatever that is but, but can you be have a happy life being sick like that that's what we're saying too not me per, i my opinion not no. or not for as happy me, as you could be 
Not, I don't think, um, I think you're falling victim to your, your Sweet negative, attri your negative attributes. Yeah. And it's a direct reflection of gluttony and you know, it's going to be horrible and it's all funny until like, but now Lizzo's like losing weight, I guess. Like, yeah. Now she's like losing weight. And in my opinion, I think that like bigger picture, it's, uh, it's just society inflicting mental illness. Well, it's, yeah. it's tough for people too. It's like eating health healthy is a little bit more expensive. You can do it on a budget though. You really can. Well, Maybe we need to help spread how to do it on a budget, but they make eating like shit and getting fat and killing yourself so easy and cheap. Well, yeah, exactly. And, cents. And, and, but it's, it's cancer. I feel like people, people are should, like are well aware of this and they don't even care. You know, like it, it's, it's cancerous material. Like the, if all you do is eat McDonald's and eat fast food, you know, like you don't, you don't deserve to be upset when the common cold like tears you down, you know, mm -hmm. because you, 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 you destroyed your body enough to where it, it's incapable of fighting off something that is, would relatively be easier yeah. to fight off. I mean, Especially, I think jujitsu is a good thing too. It helps people kind of because a lot of people they're like, I don't, I don't really have a reason to get healthy. But then you come mm -hmm. in jujitsu, you're like, damn, if I want to keep growing in this art, keep learning, getting better, getting more um, limber, getting more flexible, sleeping better, so I can train harder. Maybe I can train mm -hmm. twice a day. I think jujitsu is a good motive for people to kind of eat healthy. It's easy for us because we competed, and it's like, oh, we want to do that. But for for the average person, absolutely. And I feel like it's. Like what you said is like, it's like whatever sport, whatever sport that you want to choose, it, it really brings you back to reality of like, oh, if I want to move my body and be efficient at it, I'm going to have to watch my, my decisions. I'm gonna shed have to, the tits. I'm going to have to, yeah, I'm going to have to shed the tits and I'm going to have to like eat some, eat some fucking veggies, you know, I'm going to have to eat some veggies and quit fucking around. Um, let's switch the topic a little bit here. I, but I always like to spread that. I mean, every, most of the listeners talk about how much we help them change their kind of their habits and how much mm -hmm. it's changed their life overall. So I like to keep that in people's minds. And just to, uh, just to let you guys know, I think it's, it, it can be very difficult to eat healthy. And like, I feel like getting in that grind, I feel like people have a distorted view of eating healthy. Like, oh, I just need to eat chicken and rice every day, you know. But I'm I'm gonna start making videos on on how to eat healthy without feeling like it sucks. It's a and, good idea. And like giving, like I make really good, or I make, I try to make like desserts where it can give you that natural. Uh, it can satisfy your sweet tooth without like. Fucking any, clogging you up. Yeah, without clogging you up, without any cancerous materials. Because processed sugar, I can't remember um, which uh, cancer survivor I was talking to about this, but they they were telling me that they had like a pretty like deep, simple conversation with their doctor of how processed sugars is is food for cancer. Ah, oh, and it loves it's, it. It loves it. It thrives in it. So if you're constantly dosing yourself with processed sugars it's like you don't really deserve to be upset you know especially with nowadays people all have the answers but um but if you do have a sweet tooth i'm gonna make videos on how to fix that sweet tooth with all natural sugars and then we'll get it knocked out that'll be good yeah. let's uh switch switch uh, directions here this uh this tweet mariah showed me she said the canadian prime minister justin trudeau deleted a social media post containing a misleading claim, I guess, that the sure. Iranian authorities have imposed a death penalty on 15,000 detained pr protesters. That's what that's what Mariah initially showed me. I was like, what? So 15,000 people, Iran, they're like, you were protesting, we're going to make a mock... Uh, we're going to make an example out of you, and we're going to kill you all. Mm -hmm. And then the virgins, virgins go to heaven, supposedly in Iran. So it came out, too, that the if they're virgins then they they have to have get fucked before they get killed so they don't go to heaven but i guess a bunch of stuff's coming out to say that wasn't the claim went viral on, on twitter instagram reddit and tiktok this week so far over fifteen thousand 
protesters are estimated to have been arrested in the protest with over 2000 officially charged and five sentenced to death by the authorities okay so that was a lie that's why he deleted it mm -hmm. at least 20 protesters are currently facing charges punishable by death fuck dude they're ballsy for protesting but it's like what are you fucking supposed to do like i'm we bitch about the shit we bitch about here like right pet right. petty shit oh my gym's flooding mm -hmm. but then these people are dealing with this kind of shit in another country right right it's and fucked I, and so so you said there's protesters in canada or protesters no it was in it's I, canadian iran, prime minister iran. was talking about what's going on in iran is that yeah. well yeah. and i mean i don't i don't have any political opinions about the tyranny of evil but uh and yeah, I just thought I'd bring that I'd bring that up and just see how fucked it is. I mean, we don't know shit about it. But and nice, then all we read is we read this shit and we think it's true, and then most of it's not fucking true. So uh -huh. but we like to talk about it. Right. Well, and it's a nice reminder. I think, uh, you know, we are in, I think a lot of people like to hate on America. And until you hear shit like that, and then it's just like, oh, well, we're in a place where, like, if somebody fights you, they're going to jail. You know, like if somebody like harms you, like they're going to be found and thrown in jail and you have like these atrocities being. I wonder what it is about Abu Dhabi and Dubai that is like they seemed when we were there, they just seemed like they had had it figured out in a way. Uh -huh. But who knows? Because I don't know what it's like when you go to jail there. It could be just fucking god awful where people right. don't want to go to jail. But right, there was right. no cops. There was zero homeless people. Super clean. Super clean. Super clean. I'm like, yeah. wow. There, there's something going on that we're not. Yeah, not I went. Anything. I I uh, competed in the Abu Dhabi trials when I was a kid mm -hmm. with my little brother and my little sister. And my little sister, she won the trials, so we were able to go. But she wasn't able to compete with the boys over there because mm -hmm. it doesn't it kind of crosses the boundaries and even the the students and the, the crowd the people in the stands are sectioned off males and females they don't sit together yeah and it, it almost you almost get like a a citadel feeling in abu dhabi i haven't been there in in a few years but um you know, more than a few years but uh, when you get there everything's clean you're, you're right you don't when i was there you didn't see a car more than four years old mm -hmm. you know they're all newer they're all new vehicles all top of the line cars and yeah it's nice yeah, it's, so, it's, it's nice little nice. fucking joint yeah. all right we got ufc 282 uh coming up here we got yuri versus glover right, i can't believe right. glover's still fucking rumbling dude he's yeah. 43 yeah that's still 12 years older than me that's he's 43 still just still a chugging. top dog i mean what a <clears throat> durable motherfucker it's like yeah. most average people their body's gonna start slowly breaking down at 35 yeah but dude being that's in the usada Brazilian pool blood, being in the usada pool and being 43 years old and competing in a five rounder against someone like Yuri right, Prohoshka, right, who's right. 30, 6'2". Yeah. I'm like, Glover's a fucking, he's another breed. Dude, and he really, I mean, he's just up there beating fools with, like, just old school boxing, you know, in my opinion. Yeah, you know? he is. Like, just fucking just boxing bare, people up. Bare bones, yeah. But styles like that, that's one of those slow twitch people. It's like he found the right coach at the right time. Uh, well, a boxing I think coach, that you're you, only able to do that at the heavier weights, in my opinion. Yeah. You know, yeah it's a little bit i don't more. think i don't think you need to be much faster on the other side of the weight brackets yeah uh, and then we got jan blakovich versus magved akaladov and then we have patty pimlet versus jared gordon that's going to be a, t a tougher fight for uh patty for patty yeah especially the way he does end up giving that uh, giving up takedowns and stuff mm -hmm. uh what, what what kind of record is and the way he, um he kind of comes in like he doesn't he's not afraid of getting clipped you know and he just he just came off a win with uh leonardo did you watch Santos. that fight no was it good that was pretty yeah it was pretty so gnarly. then we got uh yeah so we got that fight coming up and then what else we got coming up on that one we got robbie lawler versus santanago pons and nebio damn they're giving robbie another tough one robbie's another one 40 years old coming mm -hmm. off the tko loss from brian barbarina and then they give him santiago pons and nebio fuck You'd think give him a maybe a little easier fight than that, but right, they don't care. I mean, UFC fucking knows better than us. Okay. Bryce Mitchell versus Ilya Torpiria. That's a good fight there. 
Who you got in that fight? Say that again. Bryce Mitchell versus Leah Topuria. Uh, 12 and 0, Leah Topuria. He's the one who fucked up Ryan Hall. Right, Bryce Mitchell, okay. good grappler. Probably, if I, I had to bet money, uh -huh. I'd probably bet on the Leah Topuria guy. Right. He's just too fucking well rounded, dude. Uh huh. I don't and really then, know him enough about him to give an educated opinion. And then Bryce Mitchell, he lives on the farm. He trains trains on his farm and stuff. Mm -hmm. There's got to be a point. Oh, he's that country boy. Yeah. That like wasn't he like talking shit to Sugar or something? I mean, <laughs> they're all bit. talking shit to yeah, Sugar. Yeah, yeah, right. But <laughs> at, at some point, when you get in the top five elite people, I feel like your training needs to be a elite but then bryce mm -hmm. mitchell goes out there and proves he's just fucking good as fuck uh -huh. um and then on this preliminary card we got alexander gustafson Ovin st prue good fight there and then we got yeah, the, the, good one. the young buck the raw rosas jr versus a jay Pirin. good fight for him for his first fight in the ufc that mm -hmm. young young kid then we got darren tilback oh nice. darren tilbacks versus the drake is due publicius and then on the early prelims, nothing that sticks out. Chris Curtis versus Joe Queen Buckley. Damn, that's actually a pretty stacked card top to bottom. We've got the yeah. Edmund Shabizian on the early prelims. Billy Quarantilio versus Alex Hernandez on the early prelims. That's actually a pretty fucking sweet card. And I was going to go. I was going to go. But two of my people from this, from my gym, have fights. And then um, a handful of people are competing in a jiu-jitsu tournament. So are you I going kinda, to Nogi Worlds? Is that what you're talking about? I am about? going to Nogi Worlds, but this is nice. December 10th. Oh, okay. Um, and then after that, we got Cannoneer Strickland. Mm -hmm. Main event, five rounder. Fuck yeah. I'm excited. That's going to be for a that. sick fight. Yeah, yeah. Because Sean Strickland's the kind of guy to intimidate people, kind of outbox them with the pressure. It's like, good luck intimidating Jared Cannoneer and, right. and kind of like trying to bully that guy the gorilla jesus <laughs> yeah, <dude>. yeah. <laughs> so that's going to be sweet yeah. um and i think uh strickland's a, like another example of just a big brawler you know i feel like he kind of he got out techniqued by uh by Eda, you know he got fucking smacked the left hook swatting at those punches right but it, i i feel like he got out teched too like he was getting I feel like he was like you could tell the level of of strike you can tell the level of striking yeah. between the oh, two. Oh, hundred percent. So how do you do you still like to train in the gi a lot? Uh I I trained a little bit the other day in the gi. And I I try not to get um I've kind of took taken a step back from sport jujitsu because um I feel like it kind of develops a false sense of security with your jujitsu, you know. I think I think but, a little bit. I think a little bit, but also when you get to that level, like your level, you mm -hmm. very you know the IBJJF points, you know mm -hmm. martial arts, you know no gi a lot, you know the difference. Mm -hmm. I feel like with some people though, knowing like okay, if I pass the guard, I get three points, and now I'm in a dominant position. I get rewarded for that. Now mm -hmm. I go neon belly, I get two points. I'm rewarded for that. And these are all places you're winning in a fight. Also, mm -hmm. I mount the person. I'm getting rewarded for that. I'm beating the fuck out of the guy if it's a fight. And then the back, you get rewarded from that. All positions you're going to win a fight from. But I understand what you're saying. Like the sport jujitsu. I mean, knowing the difference between okay, now I'm doing spider guard. Mm -hmm. Now I'm doing a deep delahiva. Now I'm doing single leg X. Now I'm doing lapel guard. Throwing those I out feel, of the, out of the window I, when I it comes feel, to fighting. And I feel like the the major things to take away from those areas of the game is is mainly like uh the technicality of the mind and it's like the structure that it develops yes more more than just like oh how would i use spider guard in nogi it's like you know yeah exactly it's exactly more of what like, you said it's more of like the mindset that it implements. yes and being able to like especially at black belt i mean the matches are 10 minutes long even mm -hmm. i mean even seven eight minutes nine minutes coming up through the ranks you have to stay focused you have to stay focused on right. the time you have to stay focused on not getting scored on you got to stay focused on advantages that's a lot to stay focused on while a crowd's right. yelling at you mm -hmm. this guy's trying to fuck you up mm -hmm. i mean i think there's a lot of benefits that come from the ibgjf rule set when it comes for mma but i think you're right and uh in my opinion you have like i feel like right now we have like uh two major um sides in the jiu-jitsu culture you have the people that are just like oh oh submission only you know like submission only or it's not i what is it it's like ibs or 
the what kind of what, what's the rule set jx fight is it win? the ebi or ebi yeah they're like you have EBI. the people that are like oh ebi submission only you know is a way to go and then you have the traditional jujitsu people that are like oh i be jjf i you passed know? your guard 10 yeah, times yeah 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 and i think that i think that it's funny how people get in the debate between which one's better instead of understanding that we're very fortunate to like have both rule sets to choose from, you know? Yeah. But then again, the real tell of it all, mm -hmm. I feel like is the ADCC. Oh, and of then course. you see the so winners no of the ADCC, mm -hmm. look at how many, most of them are IBJJF champions, good black right. belt champions. None of them are, are, I sit to my butt and I know leg locks. Of course. None of them are winning. Right. And the, the main distinction that I was going to make between the two is the IBJJF is more of how do you know the game? Mm -hmm. you and know playing and, to the rule set and it playing to the rule set well the rule sets kind of they like you said about how like they reward the guard pass they reward the mount they reward the all sweeps. these all these positions reward your ability to understand the game mm -hmm. whereas in the submission only there's no you don't there's no structure you know that's why those people don't know how to pass a guard and yeah and who you know? has more solid jiu -jitsu. and it's just like who understands the game yeah and that's why i feel like what's well, so beautiful with the adcc is they just went 50 50. they like they yeah. really went 50 50. they're like all right half the time there's points half the time there's no points they just gave it like they just collided the two rule sets and it i wish turn, more people would use it i'm surprised they don't i think i think that's what really sep separates it you know i mm -hmm. think that's why it is considered like as the, the toughest most, tournament. as the most prestigious tournament yeah. yeah yeah for sure yeah i mean fucking just the more you learn about jujitsu the more you learn about real like you may have one style jujitsu you do and it's no gi mm -hmm. it's like but do you you look into gi and then training with real brazilians that that mm -hmm. kind of changes it too because for the longest time at the beginning i trained with just kind of americans where it's just like yeah oh, we, okay. we do triangles we do guillotines right we, right but then you train with some real brazilians at some real competition training and it's like it's a different art. fucking game yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. real shit that you can tell they've been doing their whole fucking lives mm -hmm. uh, yeah you understand the airtight technique and the mindset that comes behind it yeah and like everyone thinks like oh training the gi is soft it's like dude train with some dude, good motherfuckers in the gi it is not that's, soft. i feel like that's an excuse for people that are unwilling to understand the game yeah you know yeah and the people what what do you what do you think of the people that say no nah, fuck that i don't train the gi i don't want to get like collar choked and just like I, right. fuck the gi yeah what it's because think? it's because they suck at it and they don't want to do something that they're not good at yeah overall you know, because I think that the people who love, the people who are a fan of the gi are the people that are, I feel like more, I'm not trying to throw any shade out there, but it's, it, seems, it, out. it seems like uh, it, it's catered more to like the intellects. You know, the people that like to- A little bit, yes. A, a little bit, you know? I think so too. Because and it's much more like, it's much more mentally engaging. There's so much more to think about, you know? And then you see though, like you see someone on like Gordon saying like the gi doesn't help your no gi, but then it's like, Gordon, you're Absolutely. the only one in ADCC that is a no gi peer guy. All the mm -hmm. other guys are world champions in the gi. Right. And like a really good in the gi. So can you say that? Like, mm -hmm. and I feel like, uh, it's, uh, it's so much more of like a concentrated version of the art with the gi mm -hmm. because of the amount of grips the, yeah. the infinite amount of grips that you can make you know so it's like once you're stuck in the gi you're stuck yep you know whereas in no gi it's much when you're stuck in no gi you can use your athleticism to get out your explosion you can, your slipperiness mm -hmm. there's no pants right yeah of course and that's why i think it uh people who are more on that athletic side that's why they like it better like the nogi they like the nogi better because they don't want to get wrapped up in the gi by, by some, some little, little guy yeah some little nerd just like oh and just waits for them to get tired and yeah. then chokes them out takes you know? their back chokes them yeah. like fuck the gi yeah yeah fuck. yeah that's exactly what happens yeah 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 but i i mean i feel like it's a good break for people, especially for like people that fight is just getting in the gi a little bit, just, mm -hmm. just shutting your mindset off of getting on top and pounding someone and just mm -hmm. kind of have fun and give your mind a reset and just train in the gi a little bit, learn the points, learn the rule set, learn the advantages here mm -hmm. and there. I think it's, I think it could benefit a lot of people. If you, 
if I and I haven't really made this comparison before, but if we're looking at the two art forms, you know, gi and no gi, I feel like the gi is just more colors to play with. Yeah. You know, I feel like no gi, it's less brushes. Yep. Less colors. Yeah. Bare bones. Simple. Mm -hmm. You know? Whereas like the gi, it's much more eloquent. It's there's there's just a vast there's just so much more. There's just so much more to play with. Yeah, I, I agree for sure. So uh, when you're at home and shit, you've been, you been watching any shows much or no? Uh, I don't really watch any TV. Uh, occasionally. The Lex too? I like, uh, I like, yeah, actually. Nah, I cut that. Did you really? Yeah, I cut it. You don't J? No, I don't J at all. Semen retention? Yeah, I save my chi. Holy I like, shit. I like to use it. Yeah, natural. use it when? Natural nuts only, dude. So just wet dreams uh if if i want you know i feel like um i feel like the whole the whole like pornography thing is uh an issue is it's not a, it's not only an issue but it's like it's a reflection of wanting an easy self gratification like and not, it is isn't it it is it's super easy and <clears throat> It's, uh, I feel like it's, uh, if you're doing it too much, it kind of like controls your life and it's, it's just, it's just not, not good. Anytime you get bored, you just fucking pull that phone out for a quick yank. Yeah. And then, and then it's just so easy to get it. And then I feel like that's why people aren't in like as in relationships, you know, is because if, once you can get that, like quick fix of whatever yeah. fantasy, you know, you want, then it's uh it's just like then you're not you're not out trying to like build a relationship be a, yeah be yeah. in a regular relationship and the next thing you know you're just jerking off all day going to work and you're like oh, i'm good you mm -hmm. know but i think if you're out there jerking off every day you know maybe try to dial it in maybe it's not dial it in it's like maybe you might want to think about how you're just trying to make yourself feel better when just for a sucks, quick instant you know like a quick bust yeah it, and i think that like jaying off is the same thing as like smoking weed as far as like if you're doing it like oh i had a shitty day like all oh, this fucking today sucks you know just, like me last night after yeah. the gym flooded i just which, fucking just got which oh. I, and that's that's a good like that's a good <laughs> natural thing and people would debate that you know jaying off is natural too but but it's the like if you're it. if you're using it, yeah, and you're using it like every day. If that's like your go to fix for your shit day, then you're not you're not creating habits to your shitty days in a way that's probably more healthier. Yeah, know? just the quick. Yeah, I definitely definitely agree. I mean, yeah, if you got a J off addiction, fuck, bro, you got to get a handle on that. Yeah, but, I mean, even the weed, I see it with a lot of my friends. Mm -hmm. Like you cannot abuse that fucking weed, dude. You you because you mm -hmm. the thing is you smoke weed, and you can sit there and then in your mind rationalize how it's okay to be sitting here. It's okay to be sitting, right? Here. But when right. you're not high, you kind of have like you get bored, right? And you have this sense of anxiety. So you take mm -hmm. it, like, Ugh. Mm -hmm. but dude, use that anxiety. Maybe go do something, or maybe yeah. be creative and just kind of go for a run, go or do, do go something. Outside. Yeah, but too too many people will just hit that fucking weed, uh -huh. and then they love like no weeds fire. It's like dude, yeah. Look where your life's going. If your life's right. going in a good direction and you're positively smoking weed, well, then fuck mm -hmm. it. But if you're sitting there and you're just, I'm bored, fuck it, I'm going right. to rip. Right. <sighs> and, <laughs> and see, like, I was going to, this is like, I would, shit. no, that's, that's the healthiest way to go about smoking weed, too. I, yeah. lo I love that volcano. Yeah. But, um, like, like, even now, board. like, even now where I'm just like, I'm like, eh, <laughs> I'm like, I ah, like, like, I'm good, you know? I like to keep like. When do you usually do your? Well, we don't need to talk about that because you don't like people knowing you do the smoke, smoke. Well, no, I, I'm pretty. I'll be open about it. I mainly like to do it when when my body's fucked up. Yeah. When I'm fucked up and it like it forces you, know, you to just hurts. rest. Yeah, I like to use it as like recovery because there becomes a point like it's kind of you're towing the line once you start doing it every day, and I think that. Like once you start telling, once you get in that mindset of it being your fix to your shitty day all the time, then you're doing it too much, you know, then it's like, I feel like you begin to 
get separated from reality. Yeah, a little bit, especially like the heavy, heavy day smokers. Uh But I don't know. I've seen people be day smokers and they're productive as fuck. So I don't know. Exactly. And, and that's, like I said, it's all, it's all subjective to each individual. For me, that's how I use it. There's some people who I know who smoke weed every day and they're the most productive, the way that they use it. They like, they go to work and they're very, uh, they're very effective and more power to you. Like I'm not, I'm not out here trying to advocate people to smoke less. Or what about but, getting high all day and then jacking off all day? See, now that's it when it's a problem. That's you where know? you're going to fucking and go And then downhill. And then you're like, nah, my life's chill. I make enough money. You know, my like, cheese constantly empty. Yeah, right. And I feel like when people, it's like, bro, that's why you don't want to work out. And that's why you fucking, all you eat is like fast food. And it's like, if all you eat is cancerous food and you just jack off all the time it's like don't be upset when you're a fat piece of shit with no girlfriend you yeah know? i mean those people that smoke weed they're just a bunch of fucks <laughs> <laughs> no this is actually no thc uh, shit no that that's could that's that the, the cushly place the cushly spot that never mm-hmm. paid us those guys oh fuck <laughs> <laughs> shit sucks anyway uh, uh, yeah. no i i got the i got the crafty yeah, so, I, dude, you can't beat the fucking stores and bickle. Pure, stores, I mean, stores and bickle. And bickle yeah. You get pure vaporized fucking herbs, dude. Mm-hmm. You don't burn all the all the shit. Mm-hmm. You, you know what it. I started doing? What? I started making uh, little um, collaborations with my tea that I like to make. So I'll put like the in dryer, your smoke. Yeah. yeah. So I'll put like certain tea in there with, and I, I like to use it occasionally as like. It's my pre-workout. Nice. Like I'll get some, some tea sativa. Or? I'll get some tea, some sativa with oh. some green tea. Just smoke, smoke some tea right before my runs. It's pretty nice. Fuck yeah! What'd you think yeah. of the Sugar Show versus Peter Yawn fight? I loved it. It was such. It was a great fight. It was um, a war, right? It was a war, and there was a lot of controversy. Like a lot of people thought that Yawn got robbed, and I'm completely biased to suge i train with him yeah he's a training partner so like my opinion might be a little distorted but but i really liked the fact that the decision went that way i mean it's because good. people made the debate between like oh well yawn had a lot of ground control right they're like oh well he had ground control and since the beginning of the ufc dana doesn't like any of these wrestlers that just get on top and hold and just make boring fights and at the end of the day nobody likes those fights nobody likes those fights that's why one fc that's why um in the one fc and what was the i don't know why i'm trying in the pride days you know all the asians they don't let that shit fly if you're if you're being boring if you're just holding, they'll give you a penalty card. They're like, pick it up. You know, like it's you, time to go. You get a penalty card and that's 10% off your purse. Exactly. And and it, it completely is a, is a deterrent to all those boring fights. And in the UFC, they don't, they don't do that. You know, the way they just do it is they just kick you out. You know, yeah. <laughs> they just boot you if you're a boring fighter, mm-hmm. which I mean, good for them. You know, it's their company. And if you're if you're just some if you're just some wrestler that just takes you down and hold like you need to be doing damage in my opinion cuz people made people made the debate between oh well well Suge had good I feel like Suge had the majority of the stand up control yeah he was popping him he was popping him and he was controlling the stand up more in my opinion now Jan Jan took him down but I feel like he didn't really do a sufficient enough damage with his ground control. And it's just, if I have you up against the cage, if I have the majority of the stand-up control, but I'm not letting shots rip, then I shouldn't be rewarded for that. And it should be the same on the ground. Like, if I get, if I have strong ground control, I shouldn't be rewarded if I'm not going for the kill. And I feel like that goes the same, like if I'm on bottom, if I'm on bottom and I make more damage and I'm going for the sub more, I feel like I deserve 
the ground control. I was in control. Whether, I mean, yeah, that's pretty obvious. You know? Yeah. And I I thought that the that decision was a step in the right direction for the sport. Because yeah. because wrestlers aren't gonna be rewarded for those for those boring fights anymore. How you know? come you think Shug gets so much hate? You know what, dude, I again I'm a little uh I'm a little biased now that I know him a little bit more, but um, people love to hate. They do. People love to hate, and, and it's that's the it's why. the it's the guys that have a problem with Jay in it. And and oh yeah, they yeah, yeah. Off all day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And right, then they right, see right. some confident kid yeah. and they hate it. Right, right. Maybe. Or or it's like the hard grinders that are like, no, that's not how you're supposed to do it, and they just see him living life in such a beautiful way, oh, <laughs> and then they're just like, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, the one thing I love the most about Suge, and the one thing that I find most admirable, I haven't told him this, but um, bro, he, he's him. He's him. Yeah. For somebody to go about this path and this journey and be extremely successful be able to go viral, mm -hmm. be able to make money off of, he's himself. He, he you know, really like is. He, he was like that 10 years ago. Exactly. Like yeah. he might put a little extra sauce on it every yeah. now and then, but that's him. Yeah. And when you see like the majority of fighters try to do that because they need some extra sauce. Yeah. They need to like put something out there. They need to act like a, a twat. Yeah. To to get people to start to hate them or like them or whatever, you know. And that's why, I, like I said, I find the most admirable about Suge is because he's just still he's just doing him. Yeah. He's just doing him. He's just being a clown, like yeah. being his silly self. But the the also he, we, we don't I mean don't post a ton about training because we're still grinding. Mm -hmm. Almost a majority of the day, most of the time is grinding doing brands workout grappling here mitts here mm -hmm. still working hard but he just decides to put all that shit on instagram which good. is smart good yeah better yeah i mean a lot of i mean especially now that he's number one people hate it bro that's just uh -huh. like uh, digging him and because just especially all the people just the thousands and thousands and thousands hundreds of thousands of people that said he was just gonna get smoked uh-huh and that uh, good it's like fuck Dude, sorry good yeah and you know, I had a, there was this one Brazilian coach that I was training with for a little while. And he, and he's just like, oh, he's just like, no, he's like, post, he's like, post pictures of us training just so, so your opponents know that you're training every day. And I was kind of like, fuck that. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't need my opponents to know I'm training every day. As far as they're concerned, I'm bullshitting every day. Yeah. Like, I don't care it's better it's better if they think that i'm not training yeah and i think suge really embodies that ideology yeah. sure he's just like ah he just <laughs> all he shows is just him messing around yeah. and that might be why people hate him so much is like yeah. because he's not it seems like he's not taking it seriously yeah and that's just the fluff that they're he's showing them yeah for sure know? so you ever are you you said you're gonna are you gonna start a youtube page you said uh i'm gonna start doing more youtube stuff i'm gonna or start vlog, vlogging nice. i gotta do all of it you know yeah. i feel like i have to use Instagram is becoming like the main platform that you kind of shuffle people off to. I need to start doing TikToks. You know, I think Instagram and TikToks are those more shorter forums that I'm going to use to lead into the longer like youtube videos yeah i think people who like just try to go straight to youtube and be youtube it's it's hard tough. to be it's hard to be found on youtube yeah fuck you know yeah. especially with your niche it's like i feel like you need to create yourself on apparently now my little understanding yeah. is once you start doing stuff on tiktok and start doing stuff on instagram i'm going to start using that to feed yeah people into the longer forms and one thing that i have trouble with is i'm like what do i do like yeah. what do i show these guys you know and that's like what i have trouble with is what suge does just effortlessly yeah you know he's just like oh i'm just gonna do this he doesn't overthink it you yep. know and and i just need to stop overthinking it and just have like start making vlogs of yeah. the stuff that i do well i mean you you're know. pretty rare person there's not a lot of people 26 years old six and old 
you haven't got your black belt or you have uh, i haven't, mean yeah. definitely a black yeah. belt so you're that good at jujitsu you're fighting in the ufc there's a lot of things that people are probably curious like what are his uh -huh. routines what the what does he do on his off time what kind right, of shit does right. he eat what kind of techniques does he do how does he like schedule his training i mean uh -huh. all that shit's fucking pretty easy right and you know thank you for the advice and i'll i'll get some more advice from you but i figured i just I just need to keep doing my thing yeah and just have a camera around yeah for and sure. that's that's one thing that like you're really you guys did a really good job in like jx like having your cameraman on you and that's i just need to find my cameraman yeah i need to find my cameraman to catch all those natural moments of just like hanging out talking shit yep. and one thing that i love like the environment that you guys create with jx like giving feedback like with you giving feedback you give good feedback you're in the game enough to be able to speak without sounding like an idiot you yeah. know and you guys have your own chemistry between one another mm -hmm. and um it's, it's really cool and i think that i just haven't found my cameraman that just needs to keep it rolling yeah once i have somebody next to me with the rest of the goons that just keeps it rolling and then we just chop it up how yeah. we want to chop it up and who's down to just kind of grind with you for a while and, and climb with out. you climb just, with you right right yeah 100 percent. yeah like good. i think i'm gonna do a vlog with a couple of the homies uh and, like go up to flagstaff do a little snowboarding vlog you know yeah show them what's are up. you gonna be a little edgy in your vlogs i'm just gonna be me which is a little edgy people are okay yeah which is a little edgy yeah the, yeah. the real you people so, are gonna find out yeah because yeah, that's the thing it's like you you gotta let go of like yeah my parents are gonna see this mm -hmm. yeah, my professor's gonna see this right people are right. gonna see this but i'm just and, gonna be myself and if they don't like it then right. they probably don't like really me and me and you know what that is really the biggest conflict yeah that's the biggest conflict i think with a lot I've of people in. It is because growing up, I I coached the kids class since I was 15 years old, you know, and I ran the kids class since I was very young and we had the number one kids team. I had the, me and my coach had the number one kids team in the state five years running. Fucking impressive. Which was, and I loved it. It was, it was a way for me to really envelop myself in a, in a deeper understanding of the arts mm -hmm. and be able to give back to my community. And it was, it was really beautiful. Yeah. And during that time, you know, my coach is very, very old school traditional. Brazilian traditional, only Wikis in the gym. Like when you, when you compete, you act right. Mm -hmm. Like you don't throw little fits after you lose all, everybody's watching, you know? So there's, there's a certain way to be and it kind of even bleeds into my social media where it's just like you're not going to be posting pictures of you drinking you know like we have some people like on the fight team shotgun and beers you know right after you're like weigh-ins and shit mm -hmm. and that's not me you yeah. know that's not me and but having like my coach ha having those parameters of you know there's a certain way to be kids are watching it's kind of it's a daunting thing you For know sure, that's though. like over your head you For know sure. and like they are right like i'm not trying to be you know a bad influence but with today's day and age it's impossible it's impossible to show your adult self and to like show adult humor adult humor that you want to like that i want to post yeah without kids seeing it yeah you know and it's just like it, it kind of creates this like oh well like can you be yourself can i be myself like i want to put i, I want to put stuff that i find funny you know it's just like but i don't want to feel like i'm crossing any boundaries like yeah. i got these kids watching me you know yeah so that was that was the main thing that created a lot of hesitation with me posting anything yeah and then i overthink of it i always start overthinking it and then i'm just like oh, god i just, just fuck throw it. my phone <laughs> i'm like i need to go to practice <laughs> yeah i'm like i need to stop doing this yeah but but i need to i've kind of i've let go of that because i am gonna just like be myself and you know like at the end of the day like yeah it, like it's like what you said you know it's like people are either gonna 
you know rock with you or not yeah you know and if it's the real you it's like whatever yeah and it takes and, and just like you said it takes balls it, talk, it, it takes balls it's just like i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm an adult now and i know i'm a good person mm -hmm. i spread a good message i'm right. nice to people i have good relationships i'm healthy myself mm -hmm. so i'm gonna act however the fuck i want exactly and you really you really embody the the no ego and like with your your willingness to be so open as far as like speaking on sexuality mm -hmm. and that's like another big thing is like s me speaking on sexuality when i have like certain kids watching you yeah. know it's like the little kids are going to be able to watch it on youtube you know and then they're like what you know that's professor clay yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right right He's crazy. yeah 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 and uh <laughs> and so <laughs> and so it's just like funny it's just like these weird grounds that i'm just like ah i'm like what how far do i want to like put myself out there what yeah. what topics do i feel comfortable talking about and and you guys are just like boom fuck it you guys are just like here just roll yeah. it all out and it's very i think people a lot of like real real people find that very admirable and i think that's why you guys have such a strong such a strong base of of people in your of your fans uh -huh. and because not not a lot of people are, are willing to put themselves out there like yeah. that you know and that's like the biggest conflict that i've had is yeah like, I, I mean it's like do i want to put do i want to put myself out there like that do i want to speak on sexuality and my sexual preference yeah you know and like i said i've still kind of been juggling it but i've let go of of it messing with me you know yeah, of, like thinking good. about it too much and like started to post certain things because when you are when you do speak on these topics it's a lot of real topics that everybody is dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis and if you're not talking about it you don't really create as much relativity with your fan base yeah and you they're know? just gonna know a kind of a, a, a kind of a fake version of you and that's that's mm -hmm. kind of my thing in the jiu-jitsu academy too it's like yeah okay we're in the jiu-jitsu academy i am a jiu-jitsu professor to a lot of people mm -hmm. but it's like i want them to see that i'm just a real human that i don't come right. in here and i act yep everyone's right well, i'm, right, I'm right. fucking normal just like every jiu-jitsu professor is out there right and maybe right. they play this the, the, this act but these uh -huh. kids in this day and age there's all these social medias out they're they're gonna learn about all this bad shit anyway right right yeah, yeah. so it's like That's i don't know point. i'm like but it dude i'm a, for me i'm like if a, a parent or someone doesn't want to train at my gym because of the shit i say or the way i act i'm like you that's probably it's good because you, well you probably won't fit right. in very well right because everyone in here is like pretty open-minded everyone's uh -huh. laid back everyone's super nice everyone's uplifting everyone's trying mm -hmm. to be on this healthy journey together mm -hmm. and we like to goof around and fuck off and be normal humans right and i think what you said is also uh i think is a very it's a very like beautiful thing in today's like day and age with the vast amount of jujitsu schools is every school is slightly different in yeah. their own way and everybody is slightly different in their own way every individual yeah. so i think it's very i think like the public and like the regular like community is very lucky to have options yeah for sure to go to their little subcategory of whatever they find appealing yeah you know whether they find the more traditional route appealing mm -hmm. the people who are more laissez-faire about it likes to just goof around they go to 10th planet yeah. you know and <laughs> yeah. like people like there's all different you know yeah for sure it's there's all cool. different people and uh and it's cool like i got i got friends in every every part of that spectrum too on like the traditional side to like you know the 10th planet homies that are just all smoking weed having a great time yeah for sure and uh but but you're right it, it's the one thing that i like about our that our fighting community is you you don't see a wider range of individuals and belief systems mm -hmm. like in in the room in the, like you couldn't find people more opposites from each other politically oh for sure religiously you yeah. know like spiritual whatever you want to call it whatever different beliefs like it's a it's an environment where we all come together and and we're all on the same journey of like bettering ourselves yeah everyone's through cool. through the arts yeah for sure and but like you said i think uh yeah, people are going to hate on you regardless of what you say. Literally regardless. And it doesn't matter. 
And I feel like I just need to get over that. Start letting it rip Start a little let, bit. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Start brother. Letting it rip. I want that close friend story yeah, yeah. to turn into a public story. Yeah, brother. yeah. I, that's yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was good. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you have a great day out there. That was a beautiful pod. Thank you, Clayton Carpenter, for coming in. What's Thank your you Instagram again? Me. Concrete Clayton. Concrete Clayton. Yeah. Check him out. Follow him. He's probably gonna fuck this kid up real bad. If I was a bet man, I'd be betting on it. Uh, no pressure on you, Clayton. Nah, nah. But uh, patreon.com slash Red Hawk Academy. There's a, a podcast going up there for Patreon only every week. Uh, this week was Mariah and I, and we did a QA and a and we answered every single question that was asked. And on Patreon, that's where I kind of contact people and talk to people the most. So if you message me on there, I'm guaranteed to get back to you. Um, so if you want to support the pod, please subscribe. We're almost to 30,000 subscribers, and I'm pumped. I enjoy doing it. Um, okay. Have a great week, y'all. Love you. Bye-bye. Peace. Peter gonna shuffle in, I'm gonna throw it two, one, and I'm